The city of Vancouver is home to three groups of First Nations, the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil who are part of a larger cultural group called the Coast Salish. The entire region and 95% of the province are on unceded Indigenous territories, as few treaties were signed to grant settlers rights to the land. At the time the first settlers arrived in the Burrard Inlet in the late 1850s, False Creek was a thick forest of spruce, fir, and hemlock trees. The creek was five times the present size and included a large tidal mudflat. This ecologically rich site was blanketed with thick eel grass, plentiful clam beds, and countless songbirds. Archaeological evidence and oral traditions record the First Nations' use of the False Creek area for over 3,000 years. As urbanization grew and the arrival of the CPR Railway in 1887, the Musqueam and Squamish peoples who had hunted and fished these lands for millenniums were moved to reserves in less desirable areas of Vancouver. The cultural traditions of First Nations reflect their unique relationship with the natural environment, one that is based on community, spirituality, and stewardship, from harvesting oysters on the shore to collecting Devil's Club plant to make medicine. While the expression of these cultural traditions has changed due to subsequent displacement from their traditional lands and the entrenched legacy of marginalization, today Vancouver has the third highest population of First Nations residents living in a Canadian urban centre. The surrounding area to False Creek is home to many different cultural and service organisations that support and celebrate the diverse Indigenous communities that call Vancouver home. For an Indigenous perspective on Vancouver, we asked Tanya Percival, a social worker and active community member, to share her thoughts on the legacy of colonization in Vancouver. My name is Tanya. My father is from the Nishka Nation and my mother is uh, Liwat Nation from Mount Curry. I think we have a lot of people that are um, still uh, having a hard time connecting to community. Um, like we have a lot of youth who are, I really found, I'm a mother myself and they, my children are young adults now, but back when they were teenagers, having them in a city, not having that community connection, leaving home left with them very lost. So um, I knew that we needed to have something, some kind of a, for our children to, to stay connected somehow or else I was going to lose them. You know, because there's so many influences here with, with addiction, with um, alcohol, with substance. There's so many different um, influences right. that are so foreign to us in, in our own communities. Um, I mean, the, some of the, the issues exist, but not as broad. And, you know, down here it's so much easier to get, to get trapped into that. Mm -hmm. So when I connected with my community down here and said, you know what, I really want to get my children into dancing. And we, you know, we had some really skilled people that had moved away from home as well and wanted that, so had created our dance group. And as soon as I got my children involved, it was like day and night. Really? So, and I've watched that even happen in our agency where you, as soon as you connect people to their community or to their culture, it's so different. Like you just see the change happen for them.